ഓം വക്രതുണ്ടമഹാകായ സ്വദിനമസ്തുഭ്യമേ ശ്രീഗുരവേ നമ ശ്രീഗുരുവേഹനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭുനോഭു
to the mother worshipping the Gita. So the Kriyapadam here is Anusandadami, Anusandanam Karomi. I meditate on you. Anusandanam, repeatedly, Anusandadami, repeatedly I invoke. Anusandanam Karomi, Aham Tvam Itam Anusandanam Anusandadam, Anusandadami. I repeatedly invoke. Gita, hey Amba, oh mother. Then this Gita, Bhagavad Gita, a hey Amba, a hey Bhagavad Gita, 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 Gita is Sambodha, oh Bhagavad Gita, oh the mother Bhagavad Gita, Aham Tvam Anusandarami. I repeatedly invoke you, meditate on you. Invoking by meditation, right? Dhyana. So this Bhagavad Gita, Parthaya Pratibodhitam, this Bhagavad Gita, Tvam Bhagavad Gita, Pratibodhitam, Tasmai, for whom it was taught, Parthaya to Partha, to Arjuna, son of Pratha, that is Kunti, Kaunteya, for Partha, this Gita which was taught, and it was Pratibodhitam, taught by whom? Bhagavata, by the Lord, who is that? Narayana, by the Lord, Vishnu, who has descended in the form of Krishna, Krishna Vatara, Swayam Narayanena Bhagavata Parthaya Pratipoditam Tvam Gitam Aham Anusandadhami. And this Gita written by Pratitam, all Stridinga, Vitya Bhakti Divacham, because Aham Tvam Gitam, I meditate on, I invoke you. So therefore, Gita is in Vitya Bhakti, therefore all the words are adjective to the word Tvam. Tvam meaning Gitaam. So therefore, Gratitaam. Gratitaam, it is incorporated. It was written. It was in the middle, it is in the middle of the Mahabharata. So Gratitaam, by whom? By Vyasayana. Who is Vyasa? Purana Muni. Who had written many Puranas, Ashtadasha. Puran, Puranami, and also Purana, the meaning, the word Purana can mean also oh, ancient, old. So Purana Muni, by the ancient Muni. Who is that Vyasa? So Purana Muni na Vyase na Gratitam, Bhagavad Gita, Anusantadami. Where it is located? Mahabharata Sya Madhye, Madhye Mahabharatam, which is one word. Madhye Mahabharatam. Mahabharatam, Mahabharatasya Madhye, Mahabharateshu Madhye, Sthitam, Bhagavad Gita, Tvam, Anusandadami. And it is Amrita Varshini. What Amrita? Amrita is that which is nectar, showers and nectar of what? Advaita, teaching of Advaita. So Advaita, Amrita Varshini, Bhagavati, Gita is looked upon as the goddess. Goddess as well as the mother, mother, goddess, mother. Bhagavati, which con that Gita consists of 18 chapters. Therefore, the Gita, which is 18 chaptered, Ashtadasha Adhyaginim, Bhagavati, Tvam, Bhavadveshinim, who removes the Bhava, Bhava means Samsara, removal of Bhavadveshini, Bhavadveshini is Gita. Who removes samsara by giving jnanam in the form of the teaching as it has come from the Lord of Bhagavan Krishna, presented by, as, as it is present, as it was presented by Vyasacharya. So therefore, Bhavat Veshini, removal of destroyed of samsara. So Tvam Anusandadami Iti. Om, Om Iti, 
Indeed, the first shloka starts with Om. Om also is the name of the Lord Ishvara. It's a Omkara Shabda, Pranava. Pranava is also Shabda Pratika of Ishvara. Oh, oh Goddess Mother, oh Bhagavad Gita, you who were taught by Bhagavan Narayana himself for the sake of Arjuna, the son of Prita, you who were faithfully collected and reported by the ancient sage Vyasa and placed in the middle of Mahabharata, you who are in 18 chapters, you who have the nature of shivering the nectar of non-duality, who is the destroyer of the life of becoming samsara, Anusandadami, again and again, I invoke you. So you who were taught by Lord Narayana himself for the sake of Arjuna, Bhagavata Narayana Parthaya Pratibodhikam and Parthaya Sanaprata, you who were faithfully collected, reported by the ancient sage, incorporated in the middle of Mahabharata. So, Vyasena, Purana Munina Vyasena, Dratitam, Adhye Mahabharatam. It is in the middle, incorporated in the middle of Mahabharata. Ashtadasha Adhyayini, you who are in 18 chapters, you who have the nature of shivering the nectar of non duality. So that this is Advaita Amrita Varshini. Who is the destroyer of the life of samsara? Becoming. Becoming is samsara. Life of becoming is samsara. Avad Vishini. Punaf Punahagam. Dhyayami. Invoke you. Anusandhatami. The next Dhyana Shloka. It's on Vyasacharya. Namaskara to the author of the Gita. Vyasacharya. We'll chant. Namustute Vyasa Vishala Buddhe. Please chant. Namostu, Namostude Vyasa Vishala Buddhe. Ullara Binda Yatapatra Nedra. Pula Ravinda Yadapatra Nitra Enatvaya Bharata Taila Purnaha Enatvaya Bharata Taila Purnaha Valito Yana Mayas Pradipaha Prajiva Lido Nyana Maya Pradipaha. So Namaha Astu Te to you, to whom a Vyasa Yasa Chadya, Vishala Buddha, Sambodha, a Vyasa, a Vishala Buddha, Ullar Vindaya Tapatranetra. Beautiful word. Pulla Aravinda Ayata Patra Netra. Netra means eyes. So Pulla Aravinda Ayata Patra Netra. Netra meaning eyes. Ayata Patra. Aravinda means lotus. Pulla means blossomed. So Pulla Aravinda. Fully blossomed. Completely blossomed. Ayata Patra is this, the petals of the lotus. So the one who has the eyes as clear and easy. Uh, petals of lotus is doesn't the petals of the lotus doesn't it will not it cannot be contaminated. Water doesn't the, the any particle doesn't get settled on the petal. So even the water. So it is clean, it is clear, no dust, no dust can sit on the on the petal. It is free from defects, free from dust, therefore it is clear and also pleasing to eyes. So similarly, the Vyasa Acharya, who has the eyes, like it is compared to the petals, petal of the lotus. It means as it is, as the petals of the lotus is clear, similarly, his vision also clear. 
a clear vision. He has the vision of the entire Veda Shastram. Therefore, and also another word is Vishala Buddhi. Who's has got the Buddhi? Vishala. Capability to understand. And who has a vision. So, yeah, Vyasa Acharya. Yeah, Vyasa. Vaya Bayu. Bharata Taila Purnaha. Bharata Taila is Taila meaning oil. The oil of the Mahabharata. This Bharata Taila. Bharata is Taila. Bharata is the Mahabharata compared to the oil. So, the Pradipaha, the lamp, lamp is there. The lamp has got oil. The oil is compared to the Mahabharata. And this Mahabharata, Mahabharata with the Mahabharata oil, you have lit the lamp of knowledge. Jnana Maya Pradipaha. So, the lamp of knowledge is lit by Vyasacharya, Yenatvaya, by, by who? By you. The lamp of oil, the lamp of knowledge is lit up. The lamp is there, the lamp contains the oil, the oil is compared to the Mahabharata, and the, the light is there, Jyoti. So, by which the, the oil of Mahabharata, you have lit the, the lamp of knowledge. The lamp is, the, the lamp contains the oil. Oil lits up the lits up, lits up the the light. The light is compared to the Gita. So Gita, which is in the Mahabharata, is lit up. Mahabharata compared to the oil, and Gita is the Pradipa. Is 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 compared to the the light of the lamp. So Prajvalitaha. The lamp is Prajvalitaha. The lamp is lit up. Lamp is lit up by the oil of Mahabharata. So, therefore, here, who lit the lamp of knowledge? Lamp of knowledge, knowledge is the Gita is a knowledge. Gita presents, Gita teaches, Jnanam gives Jnanam. It means for Moksha, therefore, Jnanam. So, the Jnanam is compared to the lamp. And the lamp requires the oil, and that is compared to Mahabharata. And Mahabharata composed by Yasacharya. Whose intellect is vast, and whose eyes are, who has got a clear vision, clear vision of the entire Veda Shastra. So, therefore, he could present all the topics in the Mahabharata. He could present, could deal with all the topics in the Mahabharata because he has got a vast intellect. That is why what is not contained in Mahabharata is not found anywhere. It is it is said. So to Yasacharya, the great sage who has got the clear vision and whose intellect is vast to him, I Namaskara, we offer Namaskara, Maha Te, Te, Tubyam, Namaha, to you, Namaskara. So here, Mahabharata compared to the oil. Oil located in the lamp. The lamp has got, the lamp is lit up. So Jyoti is, a, the Jyoti is the Gita. Gita is the Jyoti. Gita is compared to the Pradeep. Gita, Gita is compared to the, the, the light of the lamp. Gita is compared to the light of the lamp. For the light, you need oil, and that is Mahabharata. The vastness of Yasa's intellect. Shakespeare's intellect has been described as a platform of the world upon which its drama unfolds. He was able to write excellent characterizations for the stages of the world. Similarly, in this verse, Yasa is described as one whose intellect, whose knowledge is vast. He wrote thousands of verses, meaning that they simply flowed out of him. There is a story told that Vyasa was planning to write the Mahabharata. He wanted to dictate the epic to a stenographer. Because there was no shorthand at the time, stenographers had to write very quickly in longhand. 
Anyway, this is all Swamiji says in a joking way. This Yasacharya, he had planned to write Mahabharata. So he cannot, he cannot compose and write simultaneously because he planned already it is going to be a, a huge literature. Therefore, he wanted an assistance in the form of taking dictations from him. So therefore, he was searching for the right person. Then he found Lord Ganapati, Ganesha himself. He himself volunteered or he requested, Yasacharya requested him to be his stenographer. And Lord Ganesha also agreed with the condition. The condition was that I will write. I will write when you dictate. But my hand should not stop. It means you should continuously dictate. The moment you pause and my um, the, my hand pause stops writing, then I will not write. I will stop writing. So you have to dictate in such a way. My hand is always busy taking dictation. So there should not be any pause. Vyasacharya agreed. And Vyasacharya, he gave, he put a condition that whatever you write, you have to understand and write. Understanding and writing. So now, Ganesha, Ganapati, before he takes dictation, he has to understand what he writes. And then, and then only he can take dictation. If he doesn't understand, then he has to pause. He has to pause, think, understand, and then write. So by the time, the time by the time Vyasacharya would be ready with another few hundred shlokas. When Ganesha would take some time to pause and think the meaning of the shloka as it was presented to Vyasacharya, by the time Vyasacharya would be ready with hundreds of shlokas. That is why there are some shlokas in, in the Gita, even there. It's, it's a little difficult shloka. It's, it's a Difficult stuff out. Need to understand. Need to, need to have a clear understanding. It requires some thinking. Some shlokas are simple, but some shlokas are like in the form of yeah, yeah in the form of a yeah, yeah the sutra. As a sutra is difficult to understand, you need to unfold the meaning of the, the sutra. Similarly. Gita shloka also, certain shlokas are difficult to understand. Not in sutra form, but the meaning is like, meaning is hidden. The meaning is hidden. So to understand the hidden meaning of the shloka, one needs time. By the time, that, by the time, Vyasacharya will be ready with another few hundreds of shlokas. So but like that, Vyasacharya, with the help of Ganesha, he could complete. Like this shloka is a Yanisha Sarabhutana. That is one shloka. Nasato Vidyate Bhavaha. There are some tough shlokas, difficult shlokas, which requires clear understanding. Clear understanding means the shloka had to be contemplated upon. Then only the meaning, the arthas pranam will happen. Meaning will become clear. That is why I said it's like a sutra form. Sutra not in terms of Sutra Lakshanani, but difficult to understand. In that context, I said it is difficult, Sutra form. So, to understand and write, it requires some time. That was a condition put forth by Vyasacharya. So, Parasparam, they put some conditions and the whole Mahabharatam was composed that way. So, that's what he says here. There is a story told that Vyasa was planning to write the Mahabharata. He wanted to dictate it typically a stenographer. Because there was no short end at the time, stenographers had to write very quickly in long hand. But no human being could take the dictation from Vyasa because his mind was so quick and clear. That is already stated Vishala Buddhi and so clear. He has got his Sambhik Darshanam, vision of the Shastram. Therefore, he just reeled out the verses. He just spoke the verses, spontaneously came from the mouth of Vyasacharya and no one could hope to keep up with it. So it requires, you have to take the dictation, it requires 
speedy writing. They write it quickly. So he asked Lord Ganesha to be stenographer. Ganesha agreed on the condition that Vyasa would not stop dictating once he had begun. Vyasa agreed, but he also had a condition that Ganesha should understand everything he said in every sense, in all possible sense. The shloka to be understood. Agreeing to this condition, Ganesha pulled out one of his tusks and sharpened it, and with it, he wrote down Vyasa's Mahabharata on palm leaves. That is why Lord Ganesha will have only one tusk. In all the pictures you will see, he will have one tusk broken. That is why Ganesha is portrayed as having only one tusk. In the Mahabharata, you will find, for the most part, simple descriptive verses, but every once in a while, there will be verse which is all profound. Profound words, the purple words, with the different meanings. The reason Vyasa did this was so that he could have a breather because Ganesha understood so easily what was being written. Vyasa had to throw out a difficult verse whenever he wanted a break. If we count these verses, then we can find out how many times he stopped. By the time Ganesha figured out the meaning, Vyasa had had his time out and was ready to begin again. This is Vyasa Charya. Then third Dhyana Shloka. This Dhyana Shloka, this prayer verse is on Lord Krishna, who, <clears throat> who milked the Gita from the who milked the Gita. Is 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 Lord Krishna is a known is a Gopala, is a shepherd boy. So, he milked the nectar of Gita from the Veda. So, Veda is the Mula Shastra, Mula Pramana, from which he milked the Gita. So, this shloka and the following shloka is an invocatory prayer on Lord Krishna. He will chant, Prapanna Parijataya Prabhana Parijataya Sotra Vedraika Panaye Sotra Vedraika Panaye Jnana Mudra Ye Krishna Ye Jnana Mudra Ye Krishna Ye Gita Vrta Duhe Namaha Gita Vrta Duhe Namaha Namaha Namaskaraha Namaha Te Tubhyam Namaha Tum Tu Krishnaya Jnana Mudraya Prapanna Parijataya Gita Vrta Duhe Namaha Gita Vrta Duhe Namaha one duk means the milk, the milker of the Gita, which is Amrita. So Gita, the nectar, milk by Lord Krishna. To him, Namaskara. Who is that Krishna? Krishna, yeah. Chaturti Vakti. The word Namaha governs Chaturti Vakti. So Namaha, Krishna, Namaha, Gita, Amrita, Dughe, Namaha. And who has the, who assumes? Jnana Mudra in one hand. In the other hand, he has a whip, holding a whip, whip in one hand. Whip in one hand, in the other hand, he shows the Chin Mudra, Jnana Mudra. So, Totra Vetra Ekapana Ye, Jnana Mudra Ye. Totra Ekapana in one hand. Totra Vetra. Totra Se Vetra. Handle of the whip. Totra handle Vetra Vip. Totrasya Vetram. Totrasya Vetram. Eka Pano. So he is holding the handle of a whip in one hand and shows the chin mudra in the other hand. And Prapanna Parijata, who is Prapanna? Prapanna Parijata, who is like a Parijata Vriksha, who is like a wishful, fulfilling tree. For those who surrender, for those who surrender to him, 
therefore unto the one who is a wishful fulfilling tree for those who have surrendered who has a whip in one hand the symbol of knowledge in the other who milks the nectar that is the gita and to that krishna my salutations my namaskaraha the next shloka that is also that is uh, not a namaskara shloka to any but there is a beautiful a yeah, yeah, metaphor is given the upanishads are compared to the cows and bhagavan krishna compared to the 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 one the milker and partha is compared to the the calf and the milk is compared to and the gita is compared to the milk so we'll chant sarvopanishado kavah sarvopanishado kavah dogdha gopalanandana dogdha gopalanandana artho vatsasadher dogdha Ardho vatsa sudhi bhukta Jita, sorry Uttam jita mritam mahat Uttam jita mritam mahat Sarva upanishadaha, sarva upanishadaha Gavaha, dog, gavo, gavaha They compare to the cows And dogda, the milker is Gopala nandanaha, anandanaha Nandana, Gopala Nandana. Nandana, Gopala is Gampala, the protector of cows. Nandana is the one brings Ananda joy to joy, joy to them. So, joy of cowards. Dogda, the one who milks Dogda, Dogdru Shabda, Dogda, Dogda, Rau, Dogda, Rahai. Gopala Nandanaha, that is the name of another Lord Krishna, who is a Dogda, the milker, milker of the Upanishad, the cows, and Partha is Vatsa, the calf, and Partha and Sudhir Bhokta, he means Buddhi, he is a fit candidate, Adhikari, Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampannaha, he is a Bhokta, he is the enjoyer, enjoyer means what? He is the receiver, receiver of this Amritam Gita, Agat Gita Amritam, Dugdam, Dugdam is milk, Shriram, milk, and that Dugdam, Magat Dugdam, which is Gita Amritam, the nectar of Gita, which is Magat Dugdam, the great invaluable Milk. Who is a drinker of this milk? The vatsa, the cough, which is compared to Partha. The next one. Next one is the Namaskara to Dhyanashtoka to Dhyanashtoka on Krishna. Vasudeva Sutam Devam. Please stand. Vasudeva Sutam Devam. So this shloka, Vande, Aham Vande, I salute, Aham Vande, Aham Jagat Gurum Vande. Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagar Guru. It's time lag on your side, I think. Avam Vande, Avam Jagat Guru Mande. I do Namaskara to the Jagat Guru. Jagataha Guru, Jagat Guru, the teacher of this, the teacher, the teacher of the world, Jagat Guru. Avam Jagat Guru. Krishnam Vande. Who is Devaki Paramananda? Dev, Devaki Paramananda. Who, who is the greatest Ananda? Joy of Devaki. 
the mother of Krishna. And who is Kamsa Chanur Amaradharam? Destroyer of Kamsa and Chanur Asuras. Destroyer of Kamsa and Chanura. And son of Asudeva. Sutta. Sutta means son. Son of Asudeva. Therefore, only is called Vasudeva. So Vasudeva Krishna. So Aham Vasudevam Krishna. And Vasudeva is son of Vasudeva. Destroyer of Kamsa and Chanura. And who is a Ananda for Devaki, Parmananda, highest joy. And who is Jagat Guru, Agam Bande, Ayunaskara. So I salute Krishna, the Lord, the teacher of the world. Jagat Guru means a teacher. The teacher of the world because he knows, he knows or he has the vision of the entire Shastam. Therefore, Jagat Guru. He has got the knowledge of the Jagat, which is Ishwara Jnanam, Ishwara, Brahma Jnanam, therefore is Jagat Guru is Ishwara, he is Sakshat, Lord himself, who is the creator of this Jagat. He is a creator, therefore he is a teacher also. So those who ask for, he gives knowledge, the form of the teachers, that's, that's why some teachers are called Jagat Guru. Some teachers, Pita Adibadi are called, some Mat are called Jagat Guru. Teacher, teachers of the world, teacher of the world. And Bhagavan Krishna also Jagat Guru, because he is Sakshat Parameshwara, the teacher. Teacher of the entire world. As Ishvara, and looked upon as the Lord, is, is, is Bhagavan, the Lord Krishna, who appeared, who has descended to the earth in the form of the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. And he did Leela in the form of destroying. Kamsa and Chanura, etc. So, as Bhagavan, he had presented the Vedas to the Rishis, therefore, he is a teacher. And taking human form also, he taught the Partha. He taught, he taught to Shishya. This Shishya, Arjuna, therefore, he is a teacher. So, from the standpoint of the both, from standpoint of both, he is the, the teacher, Jagat Guru. And he incarnated as Lord Krishna, he incarnated, incarnated as Krishna, the son of Vasudeva, and destroyed Kamsa and Chanura. So therefore to him, I offer my Namaskara. So you can look upon Krishna as the Lord, or you can look upon Krishna as the teacher of the Shastra as the teacher of the Shastram itself. So therefore, Acharyaha, Gita Acharyaha, Krishnaha, Gita Acharyam, Krishnam, Akam Bande, Akam Bande. So Krishnam, Ishwaram, Akam Bande, or Gita Acharyam, Krishnam, Akam Bande. Ishwaram, Krishnam, Akam Bande is as a Lord I offer Namaskara to him, looking upon him as the Lord or as a son of Vasudeva and Devaki, as a teacher of the Arjuna, looking upon him as a teacher of the Arjuna, the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, I offer my Namaskara. Anyway, it is, it is Jagat Guru only because what he teaches is the truth. Therefore, he is Jagat Guru. Therefore, he is called Jagat Guru. What he teaches is applicable to the entire Jagat, all the, all the people, the people of the entire world. Therefore, he is Jagat Guru. It is not restricted to any particular section or particular society or particular country. Since the teaching is universal, therefore, he is Jagat Guru. Then, the next shloka, shloka number six, another beautiful shloka where 
each character important characters important characters of the important characters of the mahabharata are presented in a metaphorical way we'll see that is this samsara is looked upon as a river this battle the battle here the battle is looked upon as a river difficult to cross the battle is nothing but samsara is a river and uh, the banks of the rivers are compared to bhishma and drona and the jayadratha compared to the water of the river and gandhara that is shakuni is compared to the blue blue lily of the river and shalya and gragavati shalya is compared to the shark and kripana kripacharya looked upon as a breaker the the speed of the water flow the velocity of the water and karna is looked upon as a the breaker and ashvatha ashvatthama is compared to ashvatthama and vikarna compared to the whales vikarna ghora makara and duryodhana is compared to the whirlpool so to cross the river having such difficulty great dangerous things is not easy for people and the pandavas they were able to cross how when krishna was the boatman then there will not be any difficult to cross the cross this river so krishna that keshava was a kaivartaka by whom the pandava could able to cross this river of samsara river of battle so so krishna was the krishna was the boatman and pandavas are were the passengers and the river is this battle rana nadi rana is the yuddha bhumi yuddha that is compared to the river the river infested with all such dangerous creatures dangerous things were successfully crossed over by these pandavas with the help of the boatman called krishna so that is the shloka here important characters are all mentioned and pandavas krishna duryodhana ashwatthama vikarna karna kripa shalya bhishma drona jayadratha gandhara all are all are important important characters names of important characters among them only krishna and pandavas on the pandava side others are all on the kaurava side others are all on the kaurava side the dangers of the rivers river of battle are all the kauravas kauravas are compared to the dangers dangers of the flowing river the river which is infested with dangerous creatures and the speed of the river all these are compared to the kauravas important people on the kaurava side so we will chant bhishma drona tatha jagadrata jala gandhara nilo bhishma bhishma drona tatha jagya jayadrata jala gandhara nilo phala shalya grahavati krupena varani karne na vela kula charya grahava nidha vadhaye kupahani va khane na lela kula ashvatthama vikarna ghora makara ಅಶ್ವಧಾಮಿಖಾರ್ಣಿಖಲು ಪಾಂಡವೈರಧನಿ ಕೈವರ್ಥಕೇಶವ
ಖಲು ಬಂಧವೈರನರಿ ದೈವಾರ್ಧಕ ಕೇಶವ so this shloka with bhishma and drona as its banks bhishma drona tatha jayatrata jala jayatrata is compared to the water jayatrata was the husband of tushala tushala the sister of duryodhana jayatrata important character warrior great warrior jayatrata gandhar the uncle of duryodhana compared to the blue lily blue lily for appearance it has a beautiful appearance for an appearance aspect is very nice but the the flower is beautiful but down the river it has these is stems are so intricately formed if one is get caught lose the life so therefore gandhara is a shakuni is dangerous he has got deep like a lily has got a beautiful way of beautiful way of presenting himself can talk nicely present himself nicely but dangerous then shalya compared to the shark kripacharya Kripacharya, the brother of the wife of Dronacharya. Dronacharya's wife is Kripi. Is her uh, brother is Kripa, Kripacharya. He also taught martial arts to both the Kauravas and the Pandavas. So he's compared to the philosophy of the water of the river. Karna compared to the breakers. ಇಕರ್ಣ ಘೋರ ದಂಡ ಕರ್ಣೇನ ವೇಳಾಕುಲ ವೇಳಾಕುಲ ವೇಳ ಆಕುಲ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮನ್ ವಿಕರ್ಣ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಘೋರ ಮಕರ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ ಮಕರ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೀನ್ ಕ್ರೊಕೊಡೈಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಿಲರ್ ವೇಲ್ಸ್ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮನ್ ವಿಕರ್ಣ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಫೈಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಪೂಲ್ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನ ಇಸ್ ಆವರ್ತನಿ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಪೂಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಪೂಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಕ್ the person inside and kills him so therefore duryodhana is compared to the whirlpool such the river of battle this is the the river river bad battle river the river battle is infested with such dangerous creatures then it was indeed crossed by the pandavas how because ಕೈವರ್ತಕ ಕೇಶವ ಕೇಶವ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಕೈವರ್ತಕ ದಿ ಬೋಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ದ ಫೆರಿ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಹೂ ಕುಡ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲಿ ರೋ ದ ಬೋಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಭೀಷ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ದ್ರೋಣ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡೇಂಜರಸ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಭೀಷ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ದ್ರೋಣ ಸೊ ದೇ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಬೌಂಡ್ರಿ or the bit of the river within which the river flows so therefore it requires extreme skill to cross this river which krishna could only do so with the help of krishna pandavas cross this ocean of sorry river of that rana nadi the rana the yuddha is compared to the water in the water all the dangerous creatures are there which are compared to the kauravas and the pandavas were the passengers and the boatman was krishna and the boat is here yeah, the, the boat the comparison is not given but if you extend our imagination for this people of samsara the boat is the geeta for arjuna at least for arjuna to cross this ocean of samsara what was geeta the teaching of the teaching of bhagavan anyway that is not given just extending the our extending our imagination we can say anyway then the shloka number 7 this is another beautiful shloka 
this this shloka compares mahabharata to the lotus where the lotus grows the lotus grows in the pond in the pond of water so and the lotus which has got honey which is drunk by the anibis so there and the anibis is and the lotus the and the, and the lotus which has got honey sucked by drunk the anis are drunk by the anibis and the lotus which is in the pond the pond is com- the pond is compared to the the words of vyasacharya so in the words of vyasacharya the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita lotus is born with its various petals stamen stamens it is born and the story of krishna also is that mahabharata therefore this bhagavad this lotus is opened blossomed completely blossomed by the story of hari hari katha the lord of krishna the lord krishna hari is krishna so krishna the lord story of krishna also it is there in mahabharata even though it is there in bhagavata in a elaborate way still in mahabharata also it is there and the honey of the lotus is drunk or uh, sucked by the anibis what the anibis anibis are compared to the bhaktas the devotees day in and day out they enjoy the honey which is offered by this lotus which destroys the this any any destroys the the kali dosha the dosha the defects of this kali yuga so that is given the the the, the, the described the, the mahabharata comparing to the lotus and all other factors like the river honey bees etc to beautifully to the other things so it's a metaphorical way like the previous shloka so this is not as prayer invocatory prayer in this prayer in this in the sense it's not invocatory prayer but it is also chanted as a dhyana shloka presents mahabharata the previous shloka presents the character of the mahabharata this shloka presents the greatness of mahabharata by comparing comparing with the, with the lotus previous shloka compares the characters of the mahabharata with the, the characters the mahabharata to the the the, the creatures of in the the river and the boatman krishna parta the passengers similarly this shloka presents a the beautiful the yeah, comparison comparison of the whole mahabharata as what as pankaja as the lotus so presents in a metaphorical way we will read that read the shloka ஆராஷரியவச்சரோஜமல ஆராஷரிஷியோஜமலோதி ஷேவியமான <laughs> ஜம் கலிமலம் 
ಸೊ ಪಾರಾಶರ್ಯವಚ ಸರೋಜಂ ಸರೋಜ ಸರೋ ಸರೋಜಂ ಸರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ರಿವರ್ ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ಸರೋಜ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ರಿವರ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ 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 ರಿವರ್ ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಪಾರ ವಾಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ದಿ ಬಚ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಪಾರಾಶರ್ಯ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಪಾರಾಶರ್ಯ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಾಶರ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಚಾರ್ಯ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಾಶರ ದ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯಾಸಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆರ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಾಶರ ದೆನ್ ದೆನ್ ಸರೋಜ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ lotus the lotus which is born in the water the water is compared to the birds birds of whom para parasharya parasharya is vyasacharya then geetartha gandhotkatam that then the lotus is born and what is that lotus the, the lotus born water that is the water of the birds of parashara in that bharata pankaja the lotus of mahabharata so the birds of the parasharya that is a son of parashara vyasa in which the mahabharata lotus bharata pankajam sarojam parasharya vacha sarojam bharata pankajam nah shriyese may it do good to us ಮಹಶ್ರೇಯಸೆ ಅಸ್ಮಾಕಂ ಶ್ರೇಯ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಭಾರತ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಭಾರತ ಪಂಕಜಂ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಲಿಮಲಂ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಮಲಂ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಮಹಾ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ದಸ್ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ದಸ್ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಪಾಯಿಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಸರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಪಾಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ lotus mahabharata which is born where it is born mahabharata where lotus is born in the water water of what water of the birds the water is compared to the birds of the vyasacharya so parasharya vachas sarojam sarojam and geetartha gandhotkatam this lotus mahabharata as the gandha as a smell sweet fragrance what is its sweet fragrance geeta geeta is a sweet fragrance sweet smell of this mahabharata lotus and this mahabharata lotus has got different uh, has got many many nana akhyana kesaram stamens stamens many filaments petals adikata sambodhana bodhitam arikata arikata is vishnu kata lord of vishnu arikata sambodana abodhitam sambodana abodhitam fully opened revealed fully opened by the revealed by it's fully opened by the stories of hari hari lord hari so this lotus mahabharata lotus is completely blossomed by the stories of hari lord hari and in the loke sajjana shatpada shatpada means six shatpada pada meaning feet shat meaning six so six feet six foot the one which has, which has got six foot is called shatpada that is anibhi and they are sajjana good people good people they are sajjana so in the loka the good people agaraga day in and day out every day pratidinam pbm manam mudha they drink this ani which is in the mahabharata lotus muda happily content with full content they drink the enjoy the ani which is offered by this mahabharata lotus which is completely blossomed by the stories of lord vishnu and the smell of the lotus is compared to the geeta so and this ani which the drinking the ani of which the ani which is that is the that, that is drunk happily by the right people that is sajjana good people and this kalimala pradvamsi kalimala pradvamsi 
Pradhvamsi, the destroyer. The destroyer of Mala. Mala meaning dosha. The doshas of the, the Kali Yuga. So this Mahabharata is a destroyer of the doshas of Kali Yuga. Why? Because Gita is said, not only Gita, many other teachings are there in the Gita which are required for leading a dharmika, dharmika life. So therefore, destroys the the doshas of this Kali Yuga and this Mahabharata, which is pure Amalam Bharata Pankajam Aha Asmakam Shreyase Bhuyat may it do good to us. It is. So Mahabharata is compared to the Pankaja, the lotus, the lotus Mahabharata, which is born of the waters, Saroja. Born of the waters of the words of Vyasacharya, having Gita as its fragrance, and the honey of the Mahabharata drunk by the Sajjana, the Vivekis, the Dharmikas, and Mahabharata lotus completely blossomed, bloomed by the stories of Harikata, and made this Mahabharata be the destroyer of the Kalimala, the doshas of the defect. By removing the defect, Kalimala dosha may it do good to us. Mahashtrayase Bhuja. Smakam Shreyase Bhuja. Iti. Iti. You can take it as a prarthana also. So this is, can be taken as an invocatory prayer to the Mahabharata itself. Old Mahabharata. Then comes the Again, the Dhyana Shloka, Invocatory Prayer on Lord Krishna. Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pankum Lankhayate Kirim Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Giring Yet Krupa Tamaham Bande Sadaman and the Matavam Yet Krupa Tamaham Bande Paraman and the Tam Aham Bande, Tam Krishna Aham Bande, Paraman and the Madhava, the wife, uh, the concept of Ma Lakshmi. See? That is Bhagavan, Vishnu, that is Krishna. Aham Bande, Tam Krishnam Aham Bande. By whose grace, Yat Kripa, by whose grace, Mukam Vachalam Karoti, Yamuka, a dumb person can become an eloquent speaker. Pangam Langayate Girim, a lame person can just Cross the, the mountain. That is the greatness of the grace of the Lord Krishna. Paramananda Madhavam. The Madhavam. Madhava, that is the name of Krishna. Ma means Lakshmi. Dhava means his concert. So the wife of Lakshmi, wife of, wife, this is, this is Lord of Lakshmi, that is the wife of the Lord. Lord is, is Lakshmi, that is referred to by the word Ma. Ma means Lakshmi. Ma Dava referring to the Lord. So the concert, is uh, the, the Lord of, the concert of the Lord is Lakshmi. Ma, Lakshmi. Ma Dava means the Lord of Lakshmi. Who is that? It is Krishna. So Ma Dava. It is, the word Ma Dava can be interpreted in many ways. But one meaning is Ma meaning Lakshmi. Dava. Dava. Dava meaning it is uh, the, the Lord. So, Ma Dava Lakshmiyaha Patihi Ityartaha Ma Dava Lakshmiyaha Patihi Ma Dava Tam. Who is Paramananda? Who is completely Ananda Swarupaha? Tam Aham Pande. Tam Aham Pande. Simple stroka. I salute Krishna, the Lord of Lakshmi, Madhava. Referring to the Lord through his concert, Lakshmi. Whose nature is fullness, whose kripa, the grace makes a mute eloquent and causes the lame to scale the mountain tops. Madhava is another name for Lord Krishna. 
who has all the resources and wealth with him. The wealth stands for, the wealth is represented by Lakshmi. Lakshmi, Lakshmiya Yukta, that's why called Lakshmi Narayana. Lakshmiya Yukta Narayana, Lakshmi Narayana. So, Lakshmi stands for all the resources, all the wealth, which is with Bhagavan, the Lord. Therefore, Ma Dhava. I salute the one who is Ma Dhava, the Lord, Bhagavan, whose essential nature is Ananda. Then the last shloka. Last shloka is also an invocatory prayer. This prayer is offered to, to the to the Lord again to Krishna. And it is each line it talks about in each line it is presented that yog, one line is yogi, other one is devas, other one is the chanters of the Veda, Samaga. All the three worship whom, him, I do namaskara. To him, I offer my namaskara. So the first line talks about Brahma, Varuna, Indra, Muruta, etc. They worship him, they worship whom. Then the second line talks about the Samaga, the chanters of the Samagana, the Veda. They, by, by Vedic chanting, they worship whom? That is Bhagavan Krishna, the Yam. So you see the word yam in all the three lines. Yam, yam, and the third line also, yoginaha. Yoginaha dhyaganti, yam. They meditate on whom? Tam. They are tam. Naha. Suraganaha naviduhu. Even the devas, they suraganaha, sura, suraganaha devas and the demons, they don't, they don't, is antam, esya adi antam, they don't understand. To him, I offer my namaskara iti. So it means offering namaskara to Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna. So let us chant. Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Marutaha Stunvanti Divya Istavai Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Marudaha Stunvanti Divya Istavai Edai Sangha Padakramo Panishadai Gayanti yam samagaha. Vaidhi sanga parakramo Tiana was tita takate na manasa, Pashendiam yoginaha. Yes, yantum navedus sura sura gana. Deva yatas may na maha. Yes, yantum navedus sura sura gana. Deva Yadhasmai Namaha. First line, if you see, Stunvanti, Priyapada. Second line, Gayanti. Third line, Pashyanti. So, each line has a specific Priyapada. Now, Stunvanti, who glorifies, who praises. Stunvanti means Stutim Kurvanti, praises. Therefore, there must be the Karta, who are the Brahma, Varuna, Indra, Varunendra, Rudra, Rudra also is the Marutaha. So Varuna, Varuna, Indra, Rudra, Maruta, Brahma. All these, all these people, all these gods, Spunvanti, they prize. Whom do they prize? Yam. They prize him. Who is that him? Lord. They praise the Lord. Brahma, Varunendra, Rudra, Marutaha, Krishnam, or Ishwaram, or Vishnam, Stunvanti. How? Divyai, Stavai, Stava. Stava means the shloka, the hymns. Stotram. How? What Stotram? Divyai. By Divya, Divya Stotra. By Divya Stotra, by the beautiful, divine Stotram, the praise. Then second, like Gayanti. 
ಕೆ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಸಾಮಗಾಹ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಸಾಮಗಾಹ ಸಾಮ ಇ ಸಾಮವೇದ ಸಾಮಗಾನನ್ ಕುರ್ವಂತಿ ಸಾಮಗಾಹ ಎ ಸಾಮಗಾಹ ಎಂ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಎಂ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಎಂ ಇಸ್ ಈಶ್ವರಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸಾಮಗಾಹ ಕರ್ತ ಡೇ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಡೇ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಔ ಡೇ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಏತೈ ಸಾಂಗ ಪದ ಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ವೈದಿ ವೇದ ದೇ ಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ವೇದ ಸಾಮವೇದ ದಿ ಚಾಂಟ್ ಸಾಮವೇದ ಸರ್ ಸಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಗಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆದ ಪದ ಪದ ಪಾಠ ಕ್ರಮ ಪಾಠ ಜಟ ಪಾಠ ಘನ ಪಾಠ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ದಿ ಅಂಗ ಆಫ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ so by the different uh, angas of chanting and also with the upanishad upanishad also glorify the lord so with the upanishads and by the vedas the samagaha samaveda samaveda upanishads are there so therefore by singing they by singing they praise the lord yam gayanti they sing on whom are this they sing the glory of the lord through the vedas through the veda and through the the limbs of chanting pada krama jata ghana ghana pata etc third line pashyanti pashyanti desi who yoginah yogis yogis desi umru desi krishnam ishwaram yam yam ishwaram yoginah pashyanti si au manasa by the mind through the mind ಔ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಅವಸ್ಥಿತ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಅವಸ್ಥಿತ ಅವಸ್ಥಿತ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ರೂಟೆಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಸಾಲ್ವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಅವಸ್ಥ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಸೊ ಬೈ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಅವಸ್ಥ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಬೈ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ವ್ ಇನ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ದೇ ಯೋಗೀಸ್ they see the lord so they see the lord in the meditation so him yasya antam na viduhu suraganaha sura asuraganaha gana means groups suragana means devas asuragana is asuras so both the devas and the aduras yasya antam us antam antam means end so adi antam us whose beginning and whose end they cannot know. He is, he is not knowable for Suraganaha, for the Asuras and Devas. So he who is not knowable for the Asuras and Devas, Tam Aham Tasmai Devaya Namaha to him, I offer a Namaskara. Yesya Antam, Antam is, and he has given us nature, Swarupam, Yesya Antam, Yesya Swarupam, Asuraganaha, Devaganaha, Nadiduhu, to him i offer my namaskara so to the lord about whom brahma varuna indra maruta indra rudra and the maru devatas praise with divine hymns divya istavehi stunvanti the one whom the singers of samaveda praise by singing with the full complement of the limbs of singing in the order of pada and krama and upanishads samagaha gayanti vedaihi sanga pada krama upanishadaihi the one whom contemplative people see with the mind resolved in him in the state of meditation dhyana vastita gatena manasa yoginaha pashyanti am pashyanti tam antam swarupam asura devasura ganaha aviduhu na jananti tasmai devaya namo namaskaraha iti to him i offer my namaskara the word deva has different meanings the root meaning is that which is effulgent it is from the dhatu div dhatu to shine deva can refer to any god a celestial or even a sense organ the lord is also called deva meaning the one who is all knowing to him and to this lord my salutation sthiti with this jnana shloka is done when we see first chapter the first shloka of which we started we will continue we will continue that in the 
of the class. Om Pur Namadas Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namadachade Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Shishade Om Shantishantishantishanti Hali Om Shri Guru Namaha Hali Om Sanyawada